The last concept we have to look at is device capabilities. We've talked about these device capabilities, alluded to it when we talked about our phones, um, seeing different signals in different RSSI um, at the same distance from an access point. They also have a tablet there. And if you look at different devices, there are physical characteristics that make them different. For example, if you look at the laptop here on the left, the laptop antenna is going to be somewhere here in the back. That makes you have a lot of space to put a big antenna, therefore something that's going to collect a large amount of energy, and also something that's going to be able to radiate a lot of energy. That makes that laptop typically gets a stronger signal than a phone would have at any location. Because a phone, its antenna has to be tiny. It has to fit into this very small body, so the antenna is going to be very, very small. Also, it's a very specific type of antenna uh, that has poor performances, but the gain it has is its physical shape that makes it flat and easy to fit into a phone. And nobody's going to buy a phone because it has a good antenna. You're going to buy a phone because it looks nice. So the result is that the capability of the phone in terms of receive and send power is less than of a laptop. So from one device to the other, depending on how it was made, what it was made of, its form factor, what kind of battery it has, will have varying performances in terms of, of, of Wi-Fi. This is important because when we'll talk about site survey in module three, we'll say that you should always design for the weakest of all your devices. Identify it, design for this one, because if you design for this weakest device, the others will perform well. But if you design for your best device, which may be the laptop with which you do the site survey, then you may have bad surprises the day you bring a laptop and the day you bring a phone, because the phone may not be behaving or getting the same signal uh, that you would be expecting. By the way, where do you put an antenna in a phone? If you, if you look at any phone, um, there will be on one side your hand, and that's going to absorb some energy. On the other side, there will be your head, and that's going to absorb some energy as well. Uh, so there is no good position for an antenna. Some vendors say, well, maybe we put the antenna at the back here because people are going to hold the phone this way. But some people hold the phone this way and they take notes. Some people say, well, we'll put the antenna here at the bottom because there is the mouth. But then people hold the phone like this and then it doesn't work well anymore. So uh, there is no good or bad place. Each vendor has a different strategy. The point is that it's difficult. Uh, from one vendor to the other, the antenna may be in one location or the other because they will be assuming a certain behavior or a certain way of holding the phone that may be different from the other vendor. What you have to keep in mind is that the phones have that issue. The antenna of the access point does not because the access point is going to be on the ceiling and it's going to have a nice view of the entire environment whereas the phone is going to be at ground level with obstacles of bodies, hands, heads, and position and movement. So that's going to create more challenges. This is why typically the phones on top of the battery issue are the weaker uh, devices in your network because they have all these constraints that larger devices do not have.